Ingve. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, come on, Ingve's a buddy. He's a good buddy. Of mine. Yeah. So uh, tell us a little bit about uh, the Ingve. Well, I, you know, already was a huge fan of Ingve. I yeah. come from the hard rock background, and I could never play like that guy. But uh, I loved his style. I loved his tone. I loved everything about him. What he did. Didn't like his leather pants too much, but everything else was cool, man. He was just like the the coolest like rock star, and he you know he had the uh, you know the the attitude of you know a lot of people didn't really care for him much because he was kind of hard to get along with and stuff. But he loved Fender. Uh, him and I hit it off right away. We've been friends ever since. And um, Mike Eldred and I flew out to uh, to Florida to visit him in Miami, and uh, this was years before the, the trip came to came to be. And we, we drove out there, uh, met him, uh, he uh, picked us up at the airport where we flew into, and he had a brand new Mercedes that he bought for his wife, convertible of course, because you know Ingby likes to drive with his hair down and all that stuff, <laughs> you know, 100 miles an hour on the streets of Miami. So he came to pick us up, and we're driving up, he didn't know anything about this goddamn car that he just bought. You know, he's like trying to figure <laughs> out how to put the roof up and stuff, you know. So we're flying through the, and Mike Elder's sitting in the, right behind Ingve. He's driving. I'm sitting in the front seat like, like this. You know, oh my God, we're gonna die. And Mike's sitting behind him. Ingve's got his leathers. He just like he just got off a stage. That's how he dresses. <laughs> it's crazy, man. He's all the leather and all this crap on, and uh, he's flying through the streets, man. His hair's like flopping back, and it's. I'm looking back, and I see Elder's face getting. Like, <laughs> it's it unbelievable. But it was just a cool thing to get to meet with him. We go back to his house. Uh, looked at the guitar, I took all the specs off of it and everything, and, uh, and then that was it. We went back home, I had all the specs and everything I needed, and then it just kind of died out for a while. I didn't hear anything for like a year and a half, two years, and then Mike calls me in his office, he goes, it's time. I'm like, what do you mean it's time? He goes, it's time for the power. <laughs> Which Bay was classic for saying, and it's like, that's when I knew this, it was go time. So I kind of forgot about, you know, certain things about the guitar, so, uh, I spoke with Ingve on the phone, and, and this guitar was already kind of retired by this point. He wasn't really using it a lot. So uh, I had to go back out there to, to see the guitar again. And I said, dude, it would make so much sense for me to, you're not using the guitar right now. I'll take good care of the guitar if I could have it just for a few weeks to really become one with it and learn how I'm going to do it, you know, because it's not an easy guitar to do. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously you can tell. Uh, the guy says, he just looks me in the eye and he goes, you better take care of my guitar, man. You, I mean, seriously, dude, I don't want this thing getting thrown into, you know, in the bottom of the plane and banging up and getting screwed up. You better buy that thing a plane ticket and put it on the seat right next to you, <laughs> which we did. So I got to bring that guitar back home with me. I had it in my position for four months, which was amazing. That never really happens with an artist's guitar. And like I said, it's retired and stuff, so I really got to spend one-on-one -on -one time with it and learning everything about it and coming up with the paint scheme and how I was going to do the guitar, which I did, and I think it turned out really good. The first prototype was really a, a great guitar. Uh, the, mess of, the mess of guitar show in, in Frankfurt was coming up at this time, and Mike says, we're going. I, I was all excited. It was my first trip to Europe and everything, and, but I was really nervous because I, I know Ingve is a pain in the ass a lot of times about certain things, and he's really like beat up on people about, you didn't do this right, you didn't do that right. So I was like, man, this is, I'm going to get fired. I'm going to get fired. He's not going to like the guitar. So two days before we leave for, for Frankfurt, I pack up his guitar, I bring it home to my house with me. You know, I'm packing my bags and everything, and I'm thinking, man, I got a little bit of downtime here. I got my Marshall set up my thing. I want to break that guitar out. So I broke out the Ingve Strat, Ingve's number one, yeah. and started playing it, man. My garage, my wife was gone. She was shopping with my kid and stuff, and it's like, very cool. Crank that thing up. About 20 minutes later, there's a cop at my door. Dude, your neighbor's saying you got to turn that down, man. It's like, so that was like my little English story. The power. But I got to play the power strap, man, which was something else for me. Anyways, we move on and get it on the plane, take it over to, a, to, to Germany. The prototype and his guitar, I took both of them with me. And uh, we set it up on a table much like this. We covered it up with some black flannel and stuff like that. Ingbe comes out in pretty much the same clothes that he had on when he picked us up at the airport. <laughs> and, uh, you know, looking all sexy and stuff. And I was like, dude, you're killing me. Mike goes, are you ready to see the guitar? He goes, yeah, man. So he didn't expect. He was thinking, yeah, it's going to be another freaking strat that they try to do like mine. So he goes, go ahead. And they had, like, tons of media people there. And, and you know, his Were posse. You know, was I nervous? <laughs> dude, I didn't have any nails left. I was just like, oh, God, damn, this is where I lose my job right here. So he's pulling it back, and my eyes weren't even on anything else but his face. Yeah. And I'm looking at him, and he's pulling it back, and he had, you know, he had the sunglasses on inside. 
watch, I don't, you know, that's an that's an Ingrid thing. <laughs> but I could see his eyebrows were like, you know, kind of like the happy eyebrows at first, and then as he's pulling back the thing, they're going like this, getting kind of angry like. And all of a sudden I'm looking at him, I'm like, fuck, I'm dead, man, I'm dead. <laughs> he's pulling back the thing, and he's, he's, he's like, he's shaking because he's giggling. He's going, no way, man, no way. And he's pulling it back and pulling it back, no, no way. He pulls the thing off and he goes, this is freaking amazing. And I fooled him because he's looking at the guitars and he picks them both up and I fooled him because he didn't know which guitar was his, which is hard to do with Ingve. I think the only way that he found out that it was one of mine is because when he turned it around it had my signature decal on the back and it said prototype number one on there. But I fooled him for those few seconds on his beloved guitar that he came to America with and I figured, you know, he signed off on that guitar in like record time, like within 10 minutes after we took all the photos with it and, and talked about it and how you did this and how, how did you do this? And I'm like, it's an ancient Chinese secret, man. I can't tell you that. But <laughs> it was all, it was a done deal. And the rest of the time we spent at the show and I hung out with him. We went to dinner every night, which was comical in itself. We could talk about that for hours. But uh, it was just a great thing. We signed off on it. And I knew if I could get it by him and he dug it and that the rest of the world was going to do it as well. So we got started on the, on the Ingbe run. And uh, it was probably one of the most successful ones I think we did. One of my yeah. favorites to work on for sure.